First on our agenda is our roll call. Um, I'm just going to wing this because I don't have a list. So, um, Jamal Buffer. Present in Superior Township, Michigan. Thank you. Sarah Fuller. Present in Chelsea. Uh, Marionetta Porter. Present in Ann Arbor. Mary Thiefels. Present in Grass Lake. Thank you. John Katarski. President in Ann Arbor. And Peggy Leonard and Sophie Grier are absent. And did I miss anybody? Myself, Allison Buck, present in Ann Arbor. <laughs> All right. Um, next on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Thank you, John. Sarah seconded. Discussion. I would like to add to the agenda under special presentations, Deb Pollock with Creative Washna, who is here to tell us a little bit about the ARPA guidelines that they've put together and gotten approved by the city. Um, is that an amenable ad? We're all excited about that ad to the agenda. All right. Um, then can I have a vote for all in favor for the agenda as it is presented with that addition? Thank you, John. All right. Any opposed? No. Okay, cool. And next. Oh, I don't. It's approval of minutes on here. Oh, it's way down here. Okay. Next on the agenda is special presentation. Wow. So we'll move on right to Deb. Wow. <clears throat> um, talking about being at the top of the agenda. Uh, so hi, everybody. <clears throat> I know many of you, but I don't know Sarah nor Marionetta. So I'm Deb Pollack. I am the director of Creative Washington. I've worked and lived in Ann Arbor for, oh, three plus decades um, in the arts and creative industries. Um, director of Art Train now for 30 years, and then as a contracted, hired relationship with Creative Washington, I also serve as the executive director of that organization, which is the most important one to this conversation. Creative Washington is the arts and creative industries service, support, and advocacy organization for the county. And um, as such, the advocacy side of us, when the, uh, just a little background, when the, um, the American Rescue Plan Act funds, uh, the 24 million came down through the city of Ann Arbor. Uh, the initial plan from city staffers did not include any investment and support in the arts and creative industry. So we mounted a public campaign to work towards getting that in there. And fortunately that was successful with the support of a lot of people. And, um, so although the original ask wasn't met, the um, upshot of that was a half a million dollars was approved by the city council. Um, 200,000 of that to go to programs. Well, first of all, the, it, with the intent of the American Rescue Plan Act, the intention with these funds as they are with all the ARPA, ARPA funding is about COVID relief, restoration, renewal, payback, all those things to get people in various businesses and various parts of the community back on track after such suffering such a difficult time through the COVID pandemic. The arts and creative industries were particularly hard hit, not saying it was the only organization or the only community that, or sector that was hit, but it was hit hard. We closed our doors. Many of us closed our doors immediately on March 11th, 2020. 2020. And um, that meant that everybody was out of work quickly with no revenues coming in. Certainly, again, not the only entities that were suffering from that. And our artists didn't have any revenues anymore. They, they lost their jobs immediately and didn't have any way to make it up. So again, particularly hard hit. So uh, the American Rescue Plan funds are intended to for restoration and renewal for those that were particularly hard hit. A half a million dollars came down finally from the city council for arts and creative industries in Ann Arbor and $200,000 of that 500,000, sorry, let me rephrase that. It's split up this way. Um, the $500,000 is split up $180,000 to go to marginalized community efforts 
um, BIPOC and and um, we're, we're hesitating strictly saying trauma-induced initiatives because it, claiming that requires that there are licensed individual artists and businesses to um, to in fact produce those programs. So we're not saying trauma-based, but nonetheless a very difficult in, uh, uh, community that w has been impacted there. And then the other $280,000 will go to um, artists and creative organizations, um, businesses and the like to, for restoration and, and whatever they want to use it for, frankly. I mean, if they want to do whatever they want to apply to use it for, let me rephrase that. Um, <clears throat> so the process is, had been that the city sent out a request for proposals. Um, as we've talked since, it was unfortunate that it went through the traditional RFP channels for a city because the arts and creative community doesn't look at those channels. Um, so they didn't have any applications to manage this project, which is what the city council had recommended. And you guys had two. Um, so the city came to Creative Washington to manage this as a sub grant, sub recipient to regrant the funds. We accepted their request. And because we have that experience with a regranting agency for the state of Michigan for Region 9, so we have that experience. We've handled other city of Ann Arbor projects over time. Um, both Allison and Venata have been part of those. Allison was once on staff at Creative Washington, so she's very familiar with that. And we've done power art and a number of other things with the city, Canoe Imagine Art. So we got the contract. Um, Creative Washington is receiving $40,000 of that $500,000 in total to manage this project. And what really ultimately becomes important is how is it going to be um, executed? And we just got approval today of our proposal, taking into consideration so much of what the community said, what you all have said in the sessions that you held and likewise, and um, I, I have a document. I don't know, Allison, if you want me to share that here as a document to look through, to walk through, or if you want me to just kind of walk through it. Um, why don't you give us the kind of like overview of it? And then if you wanted to email it to Vanita, she can share it out with all of us. Does okay, that sound like great. a plan? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So I gave you kind of the background of it, so I'm not going to, to go into those details because we already discussed that. But um, what we, we've talked about the allocation, we have a high goal for equitable grant distribution. And in order to do that, and please, by the way, I'm looking at my screen right now at the same time you guys are on the screen. So if you want to stop me and ask me a question, just shout out because I can't see you at the moment because I'm not sharing the screen. I don't have a split screen. So um, please just say, hey, Deb, and I'll stop and I'll answer your question. Um, we have a high goal for equitable grant distribution. And how we're going to do that is that we um, are, we, with agreement with the city, um, we've set criteria and demographics and, and what the projects, sorry, what the, the funds can be used for. We intend to seat a panel a review panel for the applications <clears throat> that will see five to seven people, depending on what kind of response we get, with three to five of those panels being appointed and two citizens at large to be selected. There's a very strict reality that grant applicants may not serve on the review panel. Um, there was a goal to completely avoid any conflict of interest and so if somebody's intending to apply for a, for a portion of these funds, they can't be on the panel. Um, there's a residency requirement so that people actually lived in Ann Arbor, the city of, prior to the pandemic and continue to re retain residencies here. Um, and there's and an Deb, that residency requirement is not to be on the panel, but to apply, correct? Both. Okay. They want Ann Arbor decision makers to make decisions for Ann Arbor artists and creatives right. and businesses. Okay. Um, there was a conversation, just a sidebar, there was a conversation about opening it up beyond the city of Ann Arbor. 
that got complicated because what are the geographic distribution of that? And then the second conversation was, and how do you want to respond to all of the people in Ann Arbor that applied and funds went to somebody in Kalamazoo because it was a great project. So they brought it back, but there is another opportunity. I'll get to that in a second. Um, there's some specifics about the application and having access to computers so we can do um, Zooms and such like that. The, um, so any questions in general about the, the, the application process and how we're gonna get the panelists? The reason there's some selected um, panelists is that we wanna make sure some of those initiatives that were identified by council, by the Public Arts Commission and likewise, um, that there's some expertise on that panel and then opening it up to include citizen participation so that there's also that representation of the citizens. So a little bit of combination of both. And um, again, this was just approved finally today. And so invitations to any of the selected applicants, and there's been conversations back and forth with the city about that um, and others, but that hasn't even happened yet because again, this was just today. So we move fast, but not that fast. Um, <laughs> so uh, any other questions on that? Did you, you might be addressing this later, but timeline wise, as far as um, how long people will have to apply and then the review process There's and an if that's going to be a one-time timeline. thing. There's okay. an entire timeline. We'll get into that a little bit okay. more in a second. Um, so the, um, so in regards to grant applicant eligibility, the primary applicant meets, needs to meet that residency or business requirement of being in operation, a business prior to March 13th, 2020, and at the time of application, and somebody who has proof of residency to meet that if it's an individual that is applying. Um, and artists and creatives, or people claiming to be artists and creatives must be able to supply proof of earnings prior to March 13th. So that could be a W-2, a 1099, a contract, a booking or something like that. Again, this is to avoid anybody who just decides, hey, here's a pot of money. I'm gonna claim myself an artist and I'm gonna apply for it, even though I've never ever been a working artist in my life. So that that's how we got towards that. And then secondary applicants, maybe artist creatives or businesses who do not reside in Ann Arbor or have businesses in Ann Arbor, but are in partnership with the primary applicant. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. So that therefore, like if somebody is, you know, XYZ organization from Ann Arbor or X, or, you know, Sam Smith, the artist from Ann Arbor wants to do a project with somebody from, from Milan, Michigan, that that can be the secondary applicant who can bring skill sets and expertise to the project that they're doing. The applicants need to make the case, a compelling case describing the impact of COVID pandemic and how, if funded, they will utilize and benefit from the ARPA grant funds. And by the way, we're intending that case to be not onerous. We don't want a 15 page application. We want, you know, we'll probably limit it. We haven't completed the application form yet, but we'll limit it to a certain number of characters. We want to make this rather easy, but we want the case to be made. So we want to leave enough room for that. There are some exclusions. So arts and creative businesses cannot have received a shuttered venue operating grant through the federal government. Those were, there's about $11 million that came into Ann Arbor, maybe 15, I can't remember the number off the top of my head. $15 million from the SBOG, um, Shuttered Venue Operating Grant Program that uh, went into primarily venues that have public facing programming like the ARC or the Michigan Theater or University Musical Society and likewise. And those chunks of change were pretty significant, but there are many, many, many organizations that were not eligible for that SBOG money. So these groups are not eligible to apply. We're gonna be focusing on small to medium organizations, agencies or businesses with budgets of less than 750,000. And these grants to businesses and organizations will be between the range of five, excuse me, five to $10,000. And the business grants can be used on recovery and sustainability grants. 
They can use for recovery funds, wages, fees, stipends, operational back office services, promotion of health, and or project even initiatives. Um, very specific, you know, um, they could do programming if they want. They can do installations if they want. And or they can use funds to do arts and creative initiatives that support services to youth, BIPOC, and other marginalized um, populations. Similarly, with artists and creative workers, again, all the residencies are, you know, that that's all same requirements. They can use the funds again for recovery costs and or creation of new projects and artwork and or for the programs that ser provide services to youth, BIPOC and other marginalized communities. Um, so does anything on what, who's eligible and what can be, what, what it can be spent on? I mean, it's broad, really, intended, important, intentionally broad, um, because none of us really know how everybody or anybody was directly impacted by the, um, we can surmise, but they, they may have their own stories. Dan, did I see you had a question? No. No, sorry. I did. Uh, I go ahead, Jamal. Um, it's a couple from a couple minutes ago. You mentioned like primary uh, applicants and secondary. Yeah. Um, is that just saying those are the two types that can apply, or is one is primary meaning? It's they primary. have to be. They have to be primary, and then the secondary can be part of the primary's application. Got so it. this is a similar thing that we do with the state. So in the state mini grant programs, um, as an example, education universities can't apply. They're not eligible to apply. And But what happens frequently is those are the organizations have, that have the wherewithal to be able to make the application, but they want to work with a small arts organization. So the small arts organization is the primary applicant and the education applicant is essentially the secondary. They don't even, they're not even in that case considered a secondary applicant. They're just part of the project. We're calling them secondary applicants. So if you, for example, had something that you wanted to do with one of the Ypsilanti organizations, you would be the applicant because you're, you meet the residency requirements, but they would be part of your conversation or part of your application. Is that okay. clear? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Any other thing on that? Okay. Um, did you, have you have you guys come up with like the criteria for scoring yet, or is that down, later down the road? It's later down the road. We're doing the applications and the scoring. That's the next phase next that chunk. we've got to go through. We've already started putting the applications together, but the scoring. And again, we have the experience of developing this because we do the regional regranting and other regranting programs. So we're kind of familiar with it. And again, everything that we do in this case has to be approved by 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 the city offices. We can't, Creative Washington can't make the decision. And then back to the panelists, um, when we run panels, we facilitate. We don't influence the decision-making. We don't influence the scoring unless it's, you know, somebody who's on the panel who wants to use the funds inappropriately, then we definitely will step in there. But we don't vote. We just, we just keep the conversation moving forward and the process moving forward. We want to be Switzerland in that case, okay? Um, rarely ever, we, I've been doing regranting. We've been doing regranting. Allison used to manage the regranting program in, in Ann Arbor, and so she knows it, or not in Ann Arbor, but in Region 9, so she knows how we are that kind of, okay, this is what needs to be done. We're just, we're in the background making things happen. I don't want to be that person making those decisions. I'll leave it up to the panel. They're great <laughs> facilitators. Oh, thanks. Um, so there's that um, part. Go I, ahead, Maria. I have question. Um, so how how will the panelists be selected? Who selects the panelists? So that's a very good question. Um, so the the request for a, um, appointed panelists. That's been kind of already vetted with a handful of people throughout the city and otherwise to meet that. There will be an application for others that want to apply and they're gonna to need to meet the criteria. We have no idea how many people, which is why we're kind of keeping a little bit of wiggle room, but it's gonna be based again, kind of on a scoring thing based on the on the um, applications. Okay. Thank you. you know, we're, we're pretty um, adamant about the fact of 
I mean, we don't have, the city said, don't do that. Don't open that up. Just appoint people. And we're like, mm. you know, it's kind of good to get the citizens involved in this in a couple of different ways. Once One, that they can do that and be part of this, and it's important. And two, every time you invite these citizens in for these kind of programs, there's just more people out there carrying the, um, I was going to say the water, carrying the message back out there about how important these programs are and how the inclusivity is is part of what what's being done. So we are the ones who push having citizen participation. It's a great thing for them to participate in too. Because one of the things I loved about the regranting program when I managed it was you get to hear about all these really cool arts organizations and the projects they're working on through those applications. So and I can only imagine that these applications will be similar as far as cool artists and organizations that are going to apply. So it's a really great way to, you know, hear about what's going on in the city. Right. And then, and being connected to it and again, tell the stories yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, where was I now? I lost my place. Mary's got oh. her hand up. Oh, sorry, Mary, go ahead. Is, is this the Q&A portion or are you still presenting, Deb? I don't want to get ahead presenting. of myself. Okay. I'm going to wait then. Okay, great. Write your, write your comments down. So about grant applications and requirements, as I said, we're putting together the application right now. We decided to do a rolling application. We're actually taking a page a little bit out of what the Knight Foundation does to try to make this as easy as possible for people to apply. Um, so we're going to do a rolling application because we don't, we didn't want to quite lock it into saying that, you know, the applications need to be in by June 3rd at 4 p.m. Otherwise, you're excluded because we have no idea what we're going to get, right? Um, and we wanted, to, we wanted to reserve some room to adjust if necessary. So we'll open the portal, the application portal, on June 12th. Um, but the reality is, is that the first approved grants are going to be the first funded until funds run out. So we're right now saying that August 31st is going to be the end of the rolling application. However, if we expend all $460,000 in five minutes, then, oh, well, <laughs> you missed it. So it's there's an encouragement to both get it in early, but also if there's not a lot that come in right away, then we, we have that wiggle room. Okay. The review panelists, again, depending on demand or how much comes in, are going to need to be able to review applications as often we're thinking as two every two weeks, but it may not be that much because if there's only one that's there and we're waiting for some more, then we can, you know, we can hold back. Our goal is to get money into hands as fast as we can. So again, keeping it simple, not terribly complicated. We don't want to, again, be the National Endowment for the Arts where you spend 10 days writing an application. Um, so the rolling application, the review panel we talked about, there's no match requirement, which is a question people ask all the time. And then as far as distribution is concerned, our goal would to be twofold. Again, get money into hands as soon as we can. They will, uh, uh, grant recipients will sign a contract with us. We will complete an electronic funds transfer document so that we can get money into their hands as quickly as possible. And then we're going to, we're taking a page out of Michigan Arts and Cultural um, Council to require the grant recipients to write a letter to the city of Ann Arbor's mayor, city council, and city manager. Again, as, as, as Allison said, you know, so that there's others besides the people that are directly involved hearing about what these funds are going to mean to these people. So to build that awareness. And as soon as those, um, those requirements are met, we'll, we'll expend 75% of the grant. Again, there's no, there's, there will be a deadline of when all the grant monies have to be expended by. But if you spend them all at one time, you know, within three days of getting it, that's fine. If you spend it over the course of six months, that's fine. We'll want to wrap this up well within 12 months. We're expecting this to be happening or somebody could appeal to get it longer, but we'll stick with it until they're all used. We will ask for quarterly reports from the applicants, again, to tell their story um, so that we build that awareness, particularly amongst people in the city, 
council and city government about how important these kind of investments are. There is an agenda, there is an end goal, there is the idea of saying, city of Ann Arbor, step up, let's do this long-term, find some money in from other pockets and do this otherwise. So yes, that is part of what we're trying to create. And I think you guys, I'm seeing some heads nod. I think that you guys will, you know, of course, there's the, there's your, your commission without much funding, if any. Um, so you know what it's like to try to do something without any money and or any public policy to set that up. So that's a goal. Um, and then after uh, they complete their final report, and again, they can say, you know, they can apply June 1st or whatever the date is, it's June 16th, finish it up a month later and send us their final report, or it could be something that's gonna be six months old, six months long or seven months or whatever. So <clears throat> the final payment will be, Received the final 25% were received when the when the grant when the project's expended the project's completed. Um, we also will require grantees to meet the city's non-discrimination and prevailing wage requirements, and then we'll also ask them for any projects that are publicly displayed, and they don't have to be, but if they are publicly displayed. We would like them to state that this is supported in part by the city of Ann Arbor American Rescue Plan funding administered by Creative Washtenaw. Yes, we do want a little bit of acclamation, or not acclamation, acknowledgement. So that's kind of the general <coughs> um, flow. We do have an, a timeline, which is in the document that I'll send you. Both of these, there is a statement in um, the guidelines that says that the city of Ann Arbor reserves the right to adjust this if necessary, if, you know, pending, pending the number of applications, et cetera. And we wanna do that for a couple of reasons. Let's say we don't get a whole bunch in all at one time. Can we increase the number, the, per, the, the dollar amount that we're going to expend to people? Um, let's say that there's not as many that, that $200,000 that was allocated minus the fee was allocated to the marginalized communities. Maybe we don't have enough applications for that, you know, and if we can go search them out, but we might want to adjust and allow those dollars to go elsewhere. So the city has, is reserving that possibility. The timeline that we have, which you're welcome to look at, I'll send the whole thing includes everything from communications. You know, we have to, we're writing the, oh, the text and the, and the information will pass it by the city. We'll both promote it. You know, Creative Washington will promote it. The city will promote it. We, but we need the city's pass off on, on language, et cetera. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that's in the timeline. So that's, that's kind of the general big picture. And yes, Mary, if you have questions, now we're open for general questions. Do you foresee the artwork taking place in the, in the city of Ann Arbor or is it gonna expand beyond, I, I, did I miss that? Well, first of all, there's no requirement to create a piece of work. Okay, that's why there, okay, it could be programming I did here, yeah. Right, and it doesn't even have to be programming, it could be paying okay. back your debt. Oh, wow, okay, that's, right? that's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's awesome, right? It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's employees that you haven't, had or the, the EIDL loans that you've gotten. I mean, it's all about recovery. Um, okay. If somebody wants to create a project, they can. Um, you actually reminded me, I need to add one more thing. If in fact somebody wants to do a public art piece, we're not negotiating the use of the public space. They have to do that on their own, like the city or otherwise. Um, it reminds me, I gotta add that in there, but they don't have to create artwork. Okay? That's awesome. Marionetta? Um, in, in terms of the funds, in my understanding that you've got, uh, say, a year to spend the funds, then does that mean if I apply with a project that I then also have to complete that project within the year? Um, so good question. And I think that, that if I remember right, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. I think that we want to make sure that all the funds are expended and there might be even legal stuff because we still have to follow the federal rules too. 
that they have to be expended by a certain date. We're going to want this all wrapped up by 12 31 2024 because we don't want it lingering. So that's pretty much the timeline. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Because otherwise it just gets kind of stale and old and you're basically chasing people. Yeah. Instead of instead of actually making things happen. Other thoughts or questions? I mean, in, or even just in general, what do you think? Did we put something together that is way off base or is it hitting the mark? That's a mixed metaphor, I think. I think it's great. I think it seems real in line with other grant processes and seems real straightforward. I This is probably already on your timeline or things to do, but I'd love to see some sort of presentation in addition to the final reports to council of people like saying what they did with the money. Um, but yeah, no, that'd great. be a great thing to add into a council member council meeting. That's a great idea. I forgot to mention that we're going to hold a couple of zoom meetings to um, answer people's questions, you know, so applicants and or pan panelists to, to walk them through the application. Um, so we can, we can help them out with that as we would, you know, kind of a grant workshop sort of deal. Um, that's in the timeline. And then the other thing, you prompted something else, Allison. Council reports. Hmm, I can't remember what it was. Is there anything that we could do um, as council that could help promote uh, that advertisement of the workshops? Yeah, absolutely. And again, city, con or city staff will be working with their communications team to do that. I don't know how you guys fit into that. That's more of, I think, an internal. Okay reality but by all means you know once we have it um together and approved by the city um then then it, it the intention is to get that out there as far as we can okay great and you know get as many people engaged in it as possible i mean you know there's a, there's always the possibility that we won't get enough applications i can't imagine that but there's that possibility so we built that in as a contingency i'll also tell you guys something else we tried to do we tried to offer a um, guaranteed income, basic income for artists through this. I know we have part of the ARPA funding is going through that through, I don't know what entity is doing it, um, something in the city and the University of Michigan. But the idea was to provide $500 stipends to artists and creatives in the city of Ann Arbor to be able to use how they wanted to for 12 months. So for $500 every month or a year. And the intention in that is because we're always, I mean, our artists are just like everybody else who falls on the Alice um, uh, what do you call it? Um, time, not timeline, but spectrum. Artists are marginalized, they don't have enough resources and the like, and they can't afford to live in our city. And just imagine what, this is actually something that's happening in cities all over the country now, um, where guaranteed income is provided to artists so that they can remain in those communities. We tried that really hard, punched it a couple different times, and, and it was just shut down. So at least it's in front of council, or that's in front of staff members, but we, and we wanted to to do that, to see what would happen. Does that make it possible for somebody to afford to live here and still create and what would come out of it? But again, it was shut down. So I feel badly about that. But in, in truth, the $6,000 that we said that individual artists and creative workers and gig workers could make is essentially 500 bucks a month for 12 months. So we kind of got the number in there, even though we didn't get the program in there. Mm. John? Um, I just wanted to say that um, this is a very challenging project, uh, and I love the way you've approached it. Uh, the depth and breadth of your experience has sort of come to the surface, so I'm very impressed. Um, and uh, the kinds of, um, you're talking about uh, supporting the creative community and uh, not with, you know, a piece of art necessarily. And um, and the you know the guaranteed income. I, I mean, if you, there there was a way to try to experiment with that, I, I I think that would be just really awesome. But I just wanted to say uh, it's very impressive what you've already shown us, uh, 
and I love what you're doing and um, keep it up. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, of course, it comes from so much input from so many and doing the research and looking at what other communities are doing with these things and understanding or doing our best to understand the um, temperature, if you will, of city council members. And, you know, I, the community seemed to be, in general, the community seemed to be really supportive of this. I mean, and we were really surprised and pleased at how many people responded to the original call for, for commentary that we, that we and others put out there. So I think that there's more of a um, bend within the community to support this kind of a program and funding. Um, I still think city council is wary of it after you know the public art initiatives way back in the day, which is now 10 plus, uh, 10, at least 10 years ago, right? We should just get past that, but it's still, it's, there's a hangover. So hopefully this will be really successful um, there's going to be things that are funded that people don't like, or people that don't get funded that people don't like, you know, and, and we just have to stay on top of that to try to keep it as equitable as possible. So you're right, there's a lot of, there's a lot of potential to get in trouble in various ways. <laughs> <laughs> Good trouble, hopefully. Hopefully. Good trouble. That's right. That's, well, I'll take the John Lewis line there. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Any other, anything else on this? Sarah has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see it. Yep. I had a quick question about um, the quarterly reports to city council. I think that's a great idea um, to kind of keep the momentum going. And if there is citizen participation and we're getting a lot of support from the community, maybe not sharing quarterly reports, but some sort of final report, um, to keep that going um, yeah. press or something like that. Right, and I think that um, as, I, as we consider this, we probably need to make that maybe not a full-fledged condition, but an implied condition that, that it would be public. When we were talking about the universal um, basic income, with some of the models that are out there as people apply, essentially the names are put into the hat as long as they meet the criteria and you choose them but you never disclose who they are. So universal basic income, we would have kept their commentary completely confidential. I think possibly in this way with what did end up, we will ask them to, to be um, attributable to their comments and, and their reports. So, and not everybody will do, you know, four reports because they'll be done within a month or they're like, okay, I've got $5,000 and I've just paid back all the loans I took out, you know, during that time, which is like, yay, because that's what these funds are for. So. Well, I am anxious to see the scoring rubric. That doesn't sound like a very fun process to put together scoring um, projects against debt and figuring out how, who gets what money, because I'm sure we have lots of applicants, but I know you guys will do it a great job. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping it'll be easier than hard, but we, we never, you, we, well, that's sort of true. I've actually had some rounds of regranting these days that there's not as many applicants. So, um, so we, you know, have more money left over, which is weird. Um, so anyway, we'll work that we're used to it. And, you know, Eventually, if, if there are too many, it comes down to formula funding. Let's say everybody meets the criteria and then you just got to split it up between, you know, based on percentages or whatever. So it works out that way. If we wrap this up, I have another thing to bring up that's not on the agenda, if I may. Sure, go for it. Are we done with this? I mean, I want to make sure everybody said what they said or want to or whatnot. Okay, and should I send the document to you or to Venata or to both? Um, you're going to send it to Vanita and CC me. And Vanita will send it out to everybody. Okay. Um, I will do that. And then it can be, and don't it, keep it confidential until we break it because we've got to make sure that our documentation is all um, approved in our communication. I just don't want, I don't want to have to be fielding things prematurely. So if you can keep it confidential, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, so I had uh, an anonymous funder who you guys, you guys have done, um, you know, a lot with your public art, your public art plan and initiatives. Um, but it's been largely, at least from the outside, largely internal. 
And Allison will know this because she did it. Um, we, Creative Washtenaw, have been involved with public art plans that engage the public in a, in a big way, you know, kind of like big project to come down to um, setting up a, a basically a criteria of what kind of art, public art, our community wants. And the goal with that, I'm not going to do this justice, but the goal with that is to not only put the public in the public art, but to also um, to build awareness and get, in our case, get past what happened with the public art initiative, the percent for art initiative, and to encourage the community to understand what public art is all about, all the things you guys know. And we've been successful with that in other communities, putting together those kind of plans. And so this funder's like, well, why can't we do that in Ann Arbor? And I said, well, because it costs money and we've got to, you know, there's a lot of facilitation that takes place in doing something like that to open it up for the whole community. And they said, well, we would, we'd be interested in funding that. How do you make it happen? I said, well, the very first thing I would do is I'd take the question to the Public Arts Commission to see if there would be something of interest and then move on from there, depending on what the response is. So I don't know that I want an answer right this second, but if somebody has something they want to say, by all means, do that. But if not, percolate on it a second. And maybe what I can also do is send to... Vanetta and to Allison, I mean, just the link to our page on our website about public art and public art plans. Um, and along that, the other thing, what, what we'd love to do, again, it's all about changing the mindset in this community, right? We're all in with wanting to make these things happen and having these investments. Um, to, do, to do a field trip down to Toledo, who, like Ann Arbor, started the public art the percent for art program before it was fully hatched and it got tons of backlash and then they had to reconstitute and then go forward. And at this point, their public arts initiative and public arts commission is a, an integral part of the community and actually get involved with um, redevelopment in various neighborhoods and like that. So it's a really awesome model. And it, plus it has that kind of history that we've gone through. So that would be part and parcel to this whole idea. So I'm planting the seed and I'd love to, I mean, this isn't to outdo anything that you guys have done. It's an add on, if you know what I mean. So please accept it that way. Um, it's a yes and. So just think about that. Mary has her hand up. Yeah, just to kind of add on to that, Deb, I think it's a, there's a lot of different ways we can get feedback from the community. I'd love to brainstorm on that with you and whoever else. Um, I've been hearing a lot from people in the neighborhoods around the downtown wanting to be able to apply for grants to do things on the sidewalks, yep. on the streets, on their homes. So maybe this can even more broadly, like what do you want to see in your neighborhood? What do you want to see? Exactly. In your um, I think people would get super excited about that. Totally. I mean, the neighborhood, the one that we did, and Allison, you can speak to this yourself. The one we did for Reimagine Washington, we went into High Cone and we went into other neighborhoods. And they were, I mean, wouldn't you say, I mean, Allison, you wrote it. Um, <laughs> what would you say that was, that was like? I mean, they all were really excited about the ideas of and what they could do, what the possibilities were. Um, I think right now, we've been pretty limited by our projects being funded through the CIP. So yep. I think bringing awareness to that and understanding of the types of projects that we are able to fund at the moment and how that would be different if there was some other percent for art or something that could fund public art projects and what those different projects could look like and how those um, are how they're just different. Like you can't necessarily, you can't necessarily use CIP funding for a, um, a An installation sculpture, in Almendinger. Right. Or like a rotating murals or rotating sculptures along a path or something, you know, it's just not, 
really easy to do that. It's more about making the fence pretty. So um, I don't know. I think I don't know that people necessarily understand the different ways that public art can be funded through a city and how like, yeah, we're, we're doing our best, but what we have right now, but it is very limited what we can do to get more public art into the community. So some yeah, sort of absolutely. conversations and, around and that. Goal would, whatever, whatever appropriation funding mechanism would be the right answer for Ann Arbor or I mean, this would be an Ann Arbor centric project, not a not a countywide one, although there's intention and want to do it on a countywide basis too. But um, you know, the other side of that is is that the state of Michigan ordinance that allows percent for art programs are pretty limited too. So there's some conversations with members of the legislature about changing that so that it gives more flexibility to actually how a city can spend that. And then there's other initiatives that are outside of the percent for art program, i.e. Um, <clears throat> programs that are projects that are tied to city funding, city, city initiatives to all building initiatives. So like a DDA would manage it or likewise. So any private um, entity building or renovating would be required to put either build their own or put a percent or put, put, put something into the coffers of the mm -hmm. percent for our project. And there's a couple of cities in the state of Michigan that are doing that right now. We're not. John? Uh, are we brainstorming ideas? Do you want to? Sure, you, why not? Let me just throw out some. Um, first of all, the, the Committee for Art and Public Places, which is the precursor of the Public Art Commission, I did something I think was absolutely brilliant. And that was that they uh, published a coloring book, which told the value, how public art, what's important about public art and how it in, in the city of Ann Arbor takes place and, and all the mechanism of that. And it was like a coloring book, but it, you know, I mean, and it was distributed to elementary students. And of course they colored in it, but they took it home. And so uh, the family- I've never uh, seen that. And um, I think there's probably Vanita has a, a copy somewhere. I, if not, I might. But in any event, just the idea, you know, make it your own. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, percent for art mechanism is still in place within the ordinance. The only the only thing is that the money doesn't flow into it. So everything and that that was designed uh um, by um, uh, Susan, I can't think of her last name, um, that, uh, and she surveyed over 50 communities around the country. And so it was well documented and thorough. And, and you know, it just needs the political will to turn that key on. Uh, but it's For all the public there. will. And, and yes, and it's, it's all there. Uh, the other thing is, is that I think that. Uh, um, there, there's, there's too much this um, town and gown wall. And um, the University of Michigan has an enormous collection of public art, and it's, it's substantial, and they've been collecting it, and they've been emplacing it for, uh, for decades. Um, and uh, if, if somehow that uh, uh, there was a, a way in which uh, um, uh, residents in Ann Arbor could could appreciate the, the the incredible collection that we really have, it's an open campus, so you know people can go and appreciate it. Um, and um, the other thing is that uh, there there had been and there has been talk about a. Um, public art master plan. And I mean, what that would- And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and you know, if this if this plan was done well, and it wasn't just pie in the sky, and oh, I wish this would appear on there, or, you know, why don't you wrap the county building? And, but if it could be, uh, if it was was done in, in such a way that it could uh, accompany uh, the master plan, the zoning master plan, and so there are all of these various organizations. The uh, um, uh, the Design Review Board has a, has a best practices and things like that. Mm -hmm. the, the Zoning Board has 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 a master plan, and and 
but if these can kind of be brought together Get together ex exactly so that if if you are looking at the master plan not only are are you are you also seeing uh, design principles for a good building but you're also seeing potential for public art in particular locations and different kinds of public art and um i know i represent this group on the design review board and you know uh the uh, the projects that come to that design review board there, you know, the developers uh, within reason are open for, you know, they're, they, they, you know, they, they, they've never thought of it. And so all you really need to do is kind of engage gotcha. them in a particular way. And, but of course, then it's to them, it's just dollars and cents. And it's all, all that sort of thing. That's a little bit more challenging. Uh, but the, my point is, is that if you can find a way of spearheading this master plan, public art master plan, and the intention, you know, is first of all, the, the public input, and, and you do that so well, and um, that um, to, to, to bring this to the awareness of the community and sort of uh, synthesize these ideas into a document that could also be incorporated into the city's zoning master plan, building, you know, all of this kind yes. of thing and uh it's all it's all possible i mean you know ideas are a dime a dozen so uh uh you know you you have to figure out a way to do them but i i wanted to offer that to you and appreciate that i i have been to toledo and 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 i've i i took craig hoopy to toledo and uh so and i think the the fellow at in toledo i don't know if he's mark, still there i can't mark recall folk. pardon me mark folk yeah he came up and spoke at the Michigan Theater. Uh, this is a few decades ago, and really inspired people. Uh, the 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 challenge with that is people get really excited and inspired, but then what? And that's right. That's why you always need an entity of some sort that has some resources. I mean, the one thing I've I mean, I've learned a lot of things in my life, but the role of the facilitator is a critical role, and that that to keep the conversation moving convening people likewise so that it doesn't you know whatever plan doesn't just sit master plan sits on somebody's shelf going yep we got that but nobody's doing anything about it i mean it's that ongoing constant facilitation that makes the difference i mean that's i that's been my experience you guys might have something else that needs to be added to that but I think it's an important role. And, and uh, you know, sometimes that can happen within a public municipality if in fact there's will within the community, within the, within the municipality. And sometimes it requires that public private initiative. And um, I, I don't know what that answer is for Ann Arbor. Yeah. Um... I think that the art center's done a really good job of, of doing small projects over the last couple of years. That, that but that's all on public that's has, all on private businesses. No, no, no. I know, I know. But I think that the public has engaged with public art in a positive way in the past recent years. So this is a good timing for to re bring up that conversation right. and say, see these small projects that this um, nonprofit has been able to do with private dollars. And donors, what if we actually invested in our city and did this in a bigger on a bigger scale in a bigger way? Um, Sarah has had her hand up. Um, I just wanted to speak to the CIP a little bit more because that CIP list is actually pretty riveting. <laughs> Once you get you get into it um, and you see all of the plans the city has, potentially new bus stops, over all these improvements. Um, that could include public art. And we've had a lot of support from city council as of last year, more than you know has been in, in the past. I'm still relatively new to uh, the commission, but that was a big win. Um, so a lot of these projects have been approved by city council. We've had multiple um, presentations, particularly from Parks and Rec. Uh, with doing the border to border trail improvements, the band shell. Um, I grew up in Ann Arbor. The band shell is like near and dear to my heart. There's big opportunities to do big projects, but we're looking at 1% of 
the overall budget, which might be very small. If there is funding, and this is something we had talked about in our CIP meetings, available to add to that budget. Um, other dollars that could come in to make those projects kind of magnificent, something that would be, you know, kind of cool, turn into something bigger um, and something that could be monumental. Absolutely. And that, and that all goes into a master plan because you work it up from the citizens up rather than the decision makers down, right? Um, the policymakers. And, you know, even with things like bus stops, and again, going back to reimagine Washington, I mean, one of the things we talked about in that plan that the community wanted, actually four communities wanted, is you can have a, you can have a bus stop that's functional. It's a box. It's got covers. You know, it's got a, sit, a beat bench to sit on. Or you can have a, a functional but really attractive, engaging bus stop. And what's the incremental expense to make it better? And Deb, you'll be excited to hear that uh, the new bus transit bus stops are on our new CIP list for approval now. So that project from, I don't know, seven years ago is actually At happening. Least. And <laughs> we're recommending it for uh, a design enhancement. Right. But it's that whole thing. You can have a sidewalk or can you can you can have a sidewalk. You can have a, you know, a floor that is a floor. Or you can have a floor that is terrazzo and has an amazing design in it. And because cities in particular have many years to, I mean, they're not looking at return on their investments for their, their buildings. Um, they can expend those dollars, amortize those dollars over 50 plus years, which, you know, you can't do that if you're a public person who's trying to get a return on that investment. So there's so many opportunities and there's so many phenomenal examples across the country and that our community who prides itself calls itself an arts and cultural community doesn't do that it's just i don't know there's it's an incongruent reality so thank you guys for doing what you do sticking with it all these years oh my gosh you know and carrying the flag speaking of flags we're going to have a city flag uh allison could i just say one thing to to, to sarah in terms of what what you're you you've talked about that if we, if you could just get a little bit more from that one percent the uh the cip program that the art commission now has and what you are sort of uh, leading uh is an attempt to take the percent for art and make it voluntary and uh so and and the way uh, that seemed to be palatable to all of the kind of political challenges that were going on, and Deb knows this so well at the time on city council. But the percent for art would have would have allowed to do exactly what you are wanting is to pool the money. So you'd have a little bit of money, a little bit of money here. If you pulled it and put it into the band shell, you could create something really, you know, impressive. So. Um, the percent for art is such a wonderful program. You know, you 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 build your cultural infrastructure, while you build your physical infrastructure. I mean, and all the the concept is is I think it it just got uh, poisoned. I mean, through no one's fault. It just was an unfortunate time politically and 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 everything going on. But um, you know, Deb, if you could figure out a way to you know to turn that key back on and and get the money, uh, it has the staff has changed. I think you're going to find more receptive people uh, working for the city. I think you're going to find more receptive people uh, making policy for the city. So now is the time to think big and uh, forget about past failures and let's just uh no agreed agreed forward. we've got to yeah. learn from what, what happened and um and try not to make the same missteps I, in my opinion seriously is that it was all it was all a lack of of really understanding public relations and um not that everybody that was involved with it wanted to do a good thing mm -hmm. but that it was it was the communication again they didn't have the resources to do it right they didn't have the you know they didn't have the the city staff to do it they didn't have the city will to do it from that perspective and um 
they did the best they could with the re limited reality that they had. So anyway. So Doug, uh, we probably will see you again in July. If you want to come back to our next meeting and give us an update on what's going on with the ARPA funds. Okay. Hopefully you'll have um, some great projects and things to report out about being funded. Well, hope so too. You're welcome to stick around if you want, or you can go enjoy your No, I'm going to go. I've been, I've been at conferences all week, so it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you all. Really seriously Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening and thanks for being the awesome people that you are. Thanks for all your hard work. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. Thanks. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Next on our agenda is public comment, but I don't believe we have anyone from the public here. Um, after that, we have approval of minutes from our March meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Thank you, Sarah. Uh, do I have a discussion? They were perfect. All right, all in favor. All right, I see all thumbs up. Um, the minutes are approved. Uh, next thing, oh, there's someone in the meeting room. <laughs> it's not just a second picture. <laughs> A live feed. It is a live feed. I don't know if they know we're watching them, but we're watching you in the. What if we chambers. witness something wild? Whoa. <laughs> All right. I'm um, sorry. That was a distraction. Um, next is old business. And I see here on the agenda extend golden paintbrush nominations. Vanita, are you going to take up that? Sophie had asked that we extend the deadline for that. She was concerned that um, we weren't receiving enough nominations during this time, and she'd like us to keep it moving a little while longer. Okay. Do you know, um, so we did the Observer ad. Mm -hmm. Did communications do like a press release about yes. it? Mm hmm We've done some additional updates. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I only ask those questions just because if we're going to extend the deadline, it sounds like we need to do more communication about it in order to get people. Or are we thinking that people are applying, they just need more time because it's really like a two minute form? I'm not sure how folks, I, I don't know what the schedule is for most people right now. I just know that we have did not get as many as we had gotten in the past. Um, so I'm not sure what that might be part of. Okay. Um, well, Sarah, are you the only one that's on this that committee from, or working group? I think so. <laughs> I think that's here. I, I don't know, Marianne, I don't know who all is in that group. Um, I, the yeah. only thing I would say totally, yeah, if you guys want to extend the deadline, extend the deadline, but in doing so, then let's figure out some extended communication portals like maybe Creative Washington or um, other ways to get the messaging out if we're going to extend the deadline. Oh, to say, hey, the deadline's extended. But yeah, yeah, I gotta communicate that to yeah. people. Like, clearly we didn't get it out to all the right people or if we think we want more applications. Although the other thing is, is last time we did it, it was over a couple of years that we hadn't done it, right? So It was yeah. like 10 years. So yeah, I think so that there are a lot of, projects that would be nominated again. Mm. And these are projects that, you know, I wonder if part of the issue is that people are thinking this needs to be a new project. It doesn't need to be new, right? It just needs to be one that you love, um, that you think contributes to the community. So even if it was a recipient of a previous award, that's okay. Um, so yeah, it doesn't okay. have to be new. I wonder if that could be part of the issue. Potentially. I don't think I even knew that. So maybe. I'm not even know I don't know if I know it for sure, but that's what <laughs> I think. I think the idea is is that it can be any, you know, from any time period. Um, okay. We just keep celebrating it. 
and maybe it will help garner some some new projects so they can be awarded too <laughs> all right um Vanita, will you just pass that or Sarah, will you just pass that along to your working group that go ahead and extend the deadline, just um, do some extended or all additional communication around it. And if we should help with any way, um, then we can. Molly, is that Cynthia's trying to get on? Yeah, she just sent me a text message. I think she's in the waiting room. Vanita, do you see? Cynthia waiting by any chance? I don't see her waiting. Okay. We can proceed, but I, I'll let her know we don't see anything. Um, Jamal, you might want to send her the a new link just in case if it's she has, might have an old link or something. I know there were a bunch of links, so. Um, next on our agenda is new business, which has nothing underneath it. Um, then we have a report from staff. Do you have anything to report, Benita? I don't have anything new to report. Okay. Um, I know you had emailed us something about the flag, or I saw something about the flag that's coming back around and um, I don't have any new changes other than what I gave to you last time. I oh. don't remember what I sent okay. out. I don't have any new updates yet from the mayor's office on how we will move that forward. So, but it's still on the list. Yes. Okay. I had a quick question about that. So that was going to be under special projects, that working group and my impression was that we needed to kind of come up with a plan to present to the mayor. Is that something that we should start doing now? Or do we need to wait for more approvals from the office? Because it seemed to me like, yep, let's go forward. And how do you think we should do this call for art? Are you asking me? Yes. yes. <laughs> I thought you all... I sent to you all his resolution approving the moving forward with the flag. In right. that resolution, there is some details on what the city is recommending um, as far as the art commission moving forward and soliciting some possibilities for creating the uh, flag. I don't have that in front of me, so I can send that back out um, this evening. So that you have that. I, th I think he's got some real clear ideas of how he wants the design to look and how it wants to represent the city of Ann Arbor. We do have some um, with the bicentennial. There's a bicentennial logo now for the city of Ann Arbor. Um, so I can send that back out. Thank you. You're welcome. Benita, is your understanding that he wants us to come up with a plan for how city staff should administer the process or that he wants us to administer the process? I am getting the impression that the art commission would, would administer the process. Okay. John? Just as a, the history of this, uh, the mayor uh, approached me and said, what do you think of a flag? You know, this kid sent me this idea and uh, would you float the idea to the art commission? So I informally did that and uh, it was the collective uh, uh, wisdom of the art commission. They said, well, why don't you, you know, let's make sure that all the council is on the same page as the mayor. So what uh, the art commission wanted is a resolution that the mayor would present and get passed at the council tasking us to do something. So whatever that resolution is, that, that was what the art commission had asked for before the art commission moved forward. But I think the idea is, is to take the ball once we knew that the entire council was a board on board wanting this to be done. And uh, so that's that's I kind of where it is. And the, the last I sort of 
understood is that the mayor would like it tied in to the bicentennial, which is a perfect timing for it. We have, you know, um, a 200 year anniversary and we have a new flag and a new logo. So I think that's kind of, but that's a little bit of the background story. And Sarah, you sat in on the water um, treatment plant selection process, which somewhat followed what we recommended. It didn't have as much of the public input as we generally like, but having done that experience and having the outline that we've put together, um, it seems like that committee should be able to come up with a plan for how we might want to do this process. On that that yeah. uh, their treatment plant too, which was great. <laughs> so yeah. yeah we, but Mary, um, you're not in the special project group, are you? <laughs> She'll join. <laughs> Want me to be? <laughs> as long as we meet at the Grizzly Peak. Yeah. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Hi, everyone. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Sorry I'm late. I had a meeting that kind of ran over and budget amendments do today. So I'm, mm -hmm. you know, my day was a little bit thrown off. So I apologize. Good to see you all. <laughs> you too. <laughs> um. So we are under new no, report from staff on our agenda already. Um, are we ready to move on from the flag or does, does anyone have questions before we move on from there? The special projects group will meet. We'll talk about it and we will determine who exactly is on the special projects group too. So we can be. <laughs> Let me know if you guys uh, want some help with that. I can jump in. Thank you. Um, report from committees. I will start with the leadership committee. We have met several times and been productive half the time. And we, um, we have chosen two people out of the numerous people who have applied to participate as APAC um, commissioners and the first person I reached out to has not gotten back to me. So we'll be moving on to the second person and reaching out to them. Um, so hopefully we'll have someone joining us soonish by July for sure. Um, so that was one of the things we worked on. What else did we work on guys? Uh, Vanita's um, flow chart. Yes. We reviewed that and we, we had some ideas for you, Vanita, if you were open to them. We were thinking about um, one way it might be fun to show the process is to use an example project and walk people how, through how that project came to be and kind of going through your process in that way um, as another like example or side to what you have going there. Um, we thought as minimal words as you could use as possible. Um, and also if it could be dynamic where the bubbles got bigger and the words got bigger if possible and some of those are it's kind of small and hard to read, that would be good as well. Um, I feel like there was one other thing we talked about unless we just gabbed about arts and our lives. No, nope, we said just, we just I mean, we spent a couple of meetings reviewing those applications. Yes, we did. <laughs> um, Which, yeah. We also will be looking at um, putting together language for grant applicants and our next drawdown from the endowment um, in the next couple of months. So that's to come. I didn't meet with any of my other committees, so I know our communications committee has not moved forward with making our Facebook page live or Instagram or any of that yet. Um, are there, John sent us a report, which was, we can all read about this project that's going up. John, do you wanna give a synopsis for the recording version of this meeting? If anyone wants to know what happened at the development meeting. It's a, a proposal for uh, uh, 200 and some odd units uh, where the 
uh, credit union, the University of Michigan Credit Union is on William Street. And so um, the design review board takes rough kind of uh, uh, examples and uh, this uh, and you you have sketches and and various uh, renderings of it and explanations of it uh, that um, there's um, not much room for art the way the the building is configured but there are uh sort of uh the back of it and uh the kind of side panels um and i suggested uh that um uh, they put some art there and various ways a mosaic as well as paint and high pressure laminate and um and i suggested a um a, um, a rotating art gallery in in this lobby. They said they had a small space for that. They seem to be both excited about both of those ideas. Um, and uh, this is going to be an all all electric building. By the way, I I asked about uh, the natural gas, and because the city uh, the council uh, wants to get away from. Uh, natural gas. And uh, this will be a building that does that completely, um, uh, has no natural gas. It'll be all electric. Uh, so uh, kudos to them. Um, so, uh, and and then that got into the final report, which will also be attached to this project when it goes to the planning commission. So whoever reads that packet will, uh, and I, uh, I volunteered the art commission to help in whatever way, um the uh, developers uh, uh would like us to and uh, they were receptive to that so that's pretty much it it's all self-explanatory and for those at home you can uh log on to legistar and see it all thank you john thanks for continuing to be our voice in those meetings um <clears throat> i lied i did meet with our cip working group as well sarah and i met with uh david and uh, we finalized our new list and David is putting that together in a formal memo, which will go to council shortly. Um, so that's exciting. Hopefully we can look at that together as an approved list in July. Um, is there any other working groups that have anything to report out? Marianna. Um, the outreach group hasn't met, um, but I just wanted to um, give you a heads up. I've been in conversation with Thea Eck, who's a, a relatively new gallery director at the Ann Arbor Art Center, and they've got a new executive director, and they wanted to have a conversation with us at our next meeting in July. So I've asked for Nita to put that on the books. They just wanted to talk about kind of new directions and updates on the Ann Arbor Art Center and where they were going. So just wanted right. to add that. Sarah, is there an annual report we'll be looking at soon with the CIP stuff? Or... Yes, those are separate. But... Yeah, but from last year to put all that in. Any other working group related stuff? All right. Any personal professional updates before we adjourn? I invite you all out to come up to uh, Art Birmingham this weekend. Our first art fair is this weekend in Shane Park in Birmingham. It should be mostly lovely dodging the rain. So come on out, see 150 plus artists and Shop for something for that special someone in your life on Mother's Day. Cool. Oh, I have an update. Oh, sorry, you go, Mary. Okay, sorry, sir. This is um, Treetown Mural's first ever summer youth mural internship program. So I will share this with you all. We're going to be igniting um, 246 of the railroad underpasses this summer, and three of the murals will be youth driven. So that's very exciting. That just hit all the high schools in Washtenaw County now. Great. Excellent. Um, this Saturday, the uh, 13th, we are having a tile signing from 1 to 3. 
and Wilmo Towie will be signing tiles. So if you want something special for your mom, you can get it signed too. Cool. All right. Well, seeing that there are no more updates, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Sarah. Do I have a second? Thank you, Marionetta. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. That is Thank the you. end of our meeting. Thank you, Allison. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. week. See you in the future. <laughs> <laughs>